IBM's earnings uh, beating estimates. Revenue, revenue, though, falling short. Uh, gross margins for the software and consulting and infrastructure divisions all widening year over year. Joining us right now is Ethan Devon, uh, Chief Investment Officer at Manita. Good morning to you. You know, the stock is actually marginally uh, up this morning on this news in, in a market that's otherwise uh, not been that way. What's, 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 your, what's your headline? It's about the telegraphing. It's about the expectations being set appropriately and not seeing the fall off in expenditure that we expected. We did see a little bit of a fall off in the infrastructure. I think we're all aware that enterprises are tightening their belts right now, particularly in the aftermath of COVID. During COVID times, to get everyone set up remotely, there was really no holes barred in terms of expenditure. And I'd say that's still the case when it comes to software. With a focus on cybersecurity, so, the need to upgrade. Hold on. I just want to go back. You just think this was... The expectations were so low. Nobody expected they were going to, that's all we're talking about here. Yes, partly. And there's a reassurance that margins are staying solid and that expenditure on software, which is, I think, a non-negotiable part of the corporate paycheck right now, is, um, is still robust and maintained. Well, let and me ask you a question about that. So there's a lot of enterprise businesses and what we have uh, that where you're seeing the earnings coming in at least decently. But what I wonder is how reflective, I mean, this was all pre-SVB, pre some of these credit issues, pre a lot of folks, uh, you know, reining things in. So how are you? How are we to take these quarters, especially like an IBM, for example, and extrapolate that forward? Well, we just need to look at the consumer, the resilience of the consumer, and the resilience of businesses, and what they consider to be non-discretionary. So I would suggest that software upgrades maintaining the infrastructure, maintaining those plumbing in place that will enable their employees to work remotely are now in the non-discretionary bucket. So that's reassuring. And the fact that margins are not compressed is a sign that there is some pricing power there. If you look into the statements, we can see a lot of mention of AI in there, not as much mention of inflation. So clearly, and we're seeing this with all tech stocks, there is a forgiving environment around tech stocks because there is this desire for hope this belief in the future. You've been talking about Tesla earlier, less self-driving cars. That is still the dream of tech that investors are buying into. And as long as IBM is delivering the plumbing for that, there's going to be support well, for that. Well, that's what I was going to ask. In terms, of, in terms of AI, every company, including IBM, you know, now peppers their press releases with the, you know, the phrase artificial intelligence uh, throughout. Now, ostensibly, actually, IBM has been doing this for longer than a lot of others have. The question, though, is, you know, they were doing it with Watson many, many years ago. But here we are in this new moment. Where does IBM sit in this sort of stack of the Microsofts with OpenAI, Google with BARD, uh, AWS with what they're doing? Well, I'd say it's, it's going to be part of the plumbing provision. Similarly, that consulting business, which is almost a third of their revenues when we look at it broken down, is going to be wrapped around getting enterprises ready for the next frontier. So I'd suggest a lot of that is leading is going to be leaning on AI right now, as well as just providing the nuts and bolts to provide that. So I see them as being quite an essential piece of that puzzle. And yes, it's true they have been involved in that for some time, and they're not simply piggybacking on the on, on the sound bites and on the jargon right now. Well, that was the question, though: Are they or are they not? I mean, Watson to some degree was like an if-then program in the end. It was, I mean, in, in truth, I think it wasn't the AI opportunity that so many people thought it, it was obviously obviously open AI basically did what they were trying to do 10 years 15 years ago yeah I don't think the story of IBM is AI I think they were sprinkling their earning statement with that because that's what they have to do they have to show they're a forward-thinking company they are providing the plumbing as I see it from an enterprise software standpoint as well as on the infrastructure standpoint and the consulting piece. Remember, that can be very flexible and fungible according to what enterprises need. So I see it as being one of the sort of providers of the, uh, I suppose, the, um, the, the, the nuts and bolts, as opposed right. to actually the visionaries behind some of the new frontier. Okay. I want to thank you for your uh, perspective on all of this this morning. Thank you.